Good morning, crypto kings and queens. This is your boy, Papacito here. Just thought I would start this series off with providing a quick introduction of who I am and my own personal background, as well as providing information to you um, to address some kind of key questions to help you feel more comfortable to enter DeFi and this entire space and take advantage of all the incredible opportunities uh, currently available. Um, I have been in crypto for about six years now, and in DeFi for around three of those years. Uh, I was one of the first to open a MakerDAO CDP vault, which is a collateralized debt position for those unfamiliar. And it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Um, it's basically just a loan. So you, you stake your ETH into their uh, vault and you receive DAI in return. Uh, for the amount of, uh, for the value of, of that ETH. Um, unfortunately, they released it like in the worst of the bear market. So uh, I was uh, promptly liquidated uh, due to a volatility spike to the downside. Uh, that was my, my trial by fire. Uh, luckily, it wasn't a whole lot of money. It was, you know, kind of experimental. So I didn't, uh, my own risk tolerance I, prevented me from, from aping in my entire life savings. So, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was my first foray into DeFi, and I am so thankful that I stuck with it. Uh, so there's just so much novel technology and, and so much incredible opportunity uh, currently presented uh, out there uh, for, for users. I'd feel a lot more lost in the space if, uh, if I hadn't started with, uh, with Maker. So I'm hoping to deliver all that own personal information to you. And, um, you know, the very first question that I'm kind of hoping to address in this series is, you know, where are these people getting these insane yields? Like, there's some people you see you're getting 20% returns, 50%, 100%, over a thousand in some, some pools, you know, depending on your own risk tolerance. Um, it's very much, uh, you know, your own personal sort of, um, what you're comfortable losing. You have to kind of gauge that on your own personal level and what you're comfortable gaining as well. Uh, you just have to find a, a happy balance between those two and, um, and mitigate risk uh, in that sort of method. Uh, another question that I'm hoping to address is how to find some of these new and upcoming farms coming out. Uh, a lot of the reward schemes, most of the time, it's, it's based on you know, pool participants. So the more pool participants that are entered the pool, the more those rewards become diluted. So, it's obviously a lot more advantageous for you to be one of the very first in the pools because you'll get a larger chunk of those rewards. Um, also, on the flip side, it's a lot more risky. Uh, you know, you're, you're entering a, uh, a smart contract. You're staking your assets into a smart contract written by someone else. A lot of the times that's anonymous and, um, uh, you know, also sometimes doesn't really know what they're doing. So uh, you really, really have to be careful about that. There's, there's hundreds, if, if not thousands of people out there that are constantly attacking these smart contracts, looking for opportunities and holes and discrepancies and uh, to drain the pools and steal all your assets. So with that being said, um, I also am hoping to provide you some pretty solid yield farm picks that I've personally found uh, the best best in class, so to speak. Um, some strategies that I, I personally have, you know, been generating pretty consistent re rate of return and rewards off of. Um, DeFi is kind of in a weird space, going back to uh, where, you know, the more people that enter pools, the more diluted those rewards become. So a lot of times people that enter pools, they don't want to tell you, you know, jack squat about what they're entering because if you enter, their rewards become less. Um, I'm, I don't care, you know, I, I wanna see more people enter this space. I think we need more adoption. Uh, there's a lot of incredible opportunity and a lot of uh, incredible technology that it needs to be spread to the world. And uh, I really hope that this uh, content series just, just hopes to capture just, just a little smidge of that. Thought I'd start off with providing you a couple different tools that I personally use to, uh, for you to do your own independent research and uh, you'll be able to find your own opportunities um, that fit your risk tolerance and, and appetite. All right, so if you're completely new to this space and absolutely green, 
Uh, a good place for you to start would be Earnify. Uh, you essentially just go to their website and you paste in your address and see if you have any unclaimed airdrops, which is, for lack of a better term, just free money, basically. Um, the protocol try to incentivize users and growth by just airdropping them to a whole host of different addresses and uh, you essentially become a participant by default. So I have Vitalik Buterin's address here. I'm just gonna paste it in and, uh, sorry to dox your address Vitalik, I'm sure no one knows it. <laughs> but, uh, so it looks like he has $2 worth of curve, which is jack shit, but you know, <laughs> probably not even worth the gas. Uh, NFT 20 as well, he's got a little bit of that, so he's probably claimed all of the ones available to him already, but hopefully you have a, a better selection here of unclaimed airdrops that you can use. And let's take a look at what he's claimed. Um, God, I mean, look, if you just, if you just use Uni, uh, just one time, they airdropped you 400 tokens, I believe, and that 400 tokens is worth $32,180 now, which is... Just mind-boggling. Uh, in addition to that, it looks like he's claimed a lot of different of uh, these uh, POAPs. Uh, they're essentially just NFTs for for um, uh, participating in a lot of times like virtual events or, or uh, in-person events as well. Uh, you can just display them on your wallet and show everyone that you you know I, I was there, I, I survived. Uh, SCC or whatever. <laughs> it uh, looks like he's uh, participated in the Lighthouse Medaya testnet, which is, I believe is uh, a testnet on Ethereum that uh, that came out with a couple. Uh, oh God, that's been it's been several months ago. Uh, anyways, so once you got some assets and you're like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm I got a good feel of this, and uh, what what should I ape into? What farms? Uh, where I like to discover opportunities is Merv.tech. Um, you can sign up for a free account or a premium. I just have the free right now. Uh, I'll probably go for a premium here here shortly once the market picks back up and there's there's better opportunities out there. It's, it'll definitely pay for itself in you know a very short amount of time. Um, we just go up to the command line here and let's see what's new on Sushi real quick. So type in Sushi new space new. And here we go. It's gonna pull up uh, all the different liquidity pools that were just created on SushiSwap. So these are the different pools that are, are um, uh, another lack for a better term, virgin pools, I think is how I've heard them classified. Uh, so you'd be one of the very first people in these pools and you'd get a higher um, uh, reward rate since it's not diluted and there's not a lot of people in it yet. So uh, this one's interesting, diversify. There's, what I look for is the liquidity, the amount of liquidity in that pool and the transactions. Um, Merv doesn't really, I don't think they update their transactions very often. Um, so definitely the liquidity takes priority and a, a level of importance of what you're looking for. So it's definitely worth inspecting more, but just for the uh, sake of uh, showing you what this is capable of, let's, let's look at everything that's been added. So looks like Ave opened up a new pool recently. Uh, well, 24 days ago. It's not not super recent, <laughs> but uh, obviously you know the higher the liquidity, the more transactions, uh, the the safer it's going to be. Um, especially you know from uh, Ave, it's uh, um, it's going to be um, you know more reputable, uh, long longer standing projects in the space like Ave. It's going to be a, a lot safer of a bet, but probably going to be a much lower yield rate, unfortunately, is a lot more people are going to know about it as well. And uh, volatility protocol token, I've been meaning to look into them. They're that's a it's a really interesting protocol. I think if that's the one I'm thinking of, it's the uh, it's kind of like the VIX on traditional equities. If you guys are familiar, so it uh, fluctuates based on the price volatility, the extreme price volatility of crypto markets. So right now it's probably pretty. Pretty depressed. Uh, there hasn't really been a lot of volatility. I think we've ranged between uh, thirty to thirty-five thousand in BTC and two thousand to twenty-four hundred in in ETH. Uh, it seems like it's the eternal range we're forever doomed to live in. So that's fun. <laughs> Let's look at diversify. Let's see what this is about on a happier note. 
And okay, um, let's look up their token on either scan. And oh wow, they actually have their actually uploaded a logo. That's impressive. <laughs> Not a lot of people do that. Let's look at their token. All right, so they got 43 holders, so barely any holders whatsoever of their token. So it's definitely it's either like brand spanking new, which is looks like it's the case, or what's going on? They don't have a lot of incentives going on. Um, okay, so the first transaction, their mint, they deployed, and they deployed a long time ago. They deployed uh, what four months ago, right? <laughs> Math is hard, guys. And you know maybe they were just working in the back end now for the entire time. So let's check out their website. Let's see what it's about. Diversify easiest way to access DeFi opportunities on Ethereum. And da, 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 da. it looks like it's maybe like a yield aggregator or something. Yeah, more or less. Looks like a yield aggregator. Um, well, they got an and mem going though. That's that's good. That's a promising thing. And do they have any like pools or yield strategies open right now? Wow. Wow. Less than 2%. Okay. So probably still building, it looks like. Um, you know, does, it doesn't look like they're, it's worth worth going into, personally for me. Um, definitely worth keeping on your radar, though. And uh, this, this is how you discover these new opportunities. This is how you become one of the first ones to own one of these tokens. I mean, this looks like a solid project. Um, actually, another research tool. Let's do a, like just a little bit more. Uh, in-depth understanding of this one. Um, I, I personally go to GitHub and let's type in diversify, see what pulls up. All right, cool, perfect. A lot of times they'll have closed repos, which really really stinks uh, doing your research because you obviously won't be able to look at the look at what they're doing um, on the back end. So let's look at their client library. And let's see. Uh, yeah, it's all pretty old, 18 days ago, last month. They have a lot of contributors, though. That's that's a good sign. Let's look at their top contributor here, see what's going on. And so this guy's he's worked on Hexa Wallet, which is, I've never heard of it, but uh, it's got a lot of good stuff here. Eth Tools, I've definitely heard of that. I'm a lot more familiar with the uh, Ethereum ecosystem than, than Bitcoin ecosystem, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately, I guess, either way. And wow, holy cow, look at all the repo, look at all the commits he's got. So most of them are commits too, and they're not code reviews, which is what you want to see. He's actually produced code. He's actually uh, created and produced and uh, deployed that code. So that's that's really, really good to see. That's what you want to see, just this solid green board of, uh, of commits. So that's very promising. Uh, when you're researching projects, that's very promising to see is, uh, is devs that have been in the space for longer than a couple years are very few and far in between. Um, very, very hard to come by. So that's very, very promising. A good thing to see. Let's look at this guy. He's in Belgrade. Sorry, Mateja. I didn't mean to dox your, hope you don't mind your, your profile photos on there. So this guy, same, same thing. I mean, he's got a not as many, but still, this is like very solid, um, very good history. And let's see, like, let's look at what he worked on October 1st. Uh, yeah, he was working on, on Diversify. So registering contract wallet, wallet address. Okay, well, that's, I mean, that's good to see. It's definitely worth keeping on your radar. Doesn't look like there's any pool strategies available right now, but they have their own token um, and they're working on it. So that's, both very promising signs. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ape into their token anytime soon because uh, anything could happen. But uh, I'd, I'd keep it on your radar and just uh, check in on it every every uh, week or so and see what's going on. So last but not least, let's go check out DeFi Llama. That is uh, another really really useful tool um, to use and kind of see and where the money's flowing in DeFi. Um, uh, money doesn't really stay in one place <laughs> for very long in DeFi. It's not like traditional markets where there's just gradual declines and gradual um, uh, inclines. Uh, DeFi, you know, you could have a multi-billion dollar project that's worth nothing the next day. 
So uh, you definitely have to keep, stay vigilant and see where who's going into what, you know, what, what pools are available, what, what where the money's going. And De DeFi Llama is a great way to do that. So let's look at what's a one day change and let's see what's available. Wow, okay, Wasabi. So that's definitely worth checking out. Um, I've I've actually I've been following Wasabi for for quite a while. They're they're a, a great great project. They're um, they're uh, pretty much identical to another project that came first, Alchemex, and uh, you know love them both. They're both brilliant teams. Uh, Wasabi, I think they're more trying to focus on uh, the BSC ecosystem. Uh, you know they have Ethereum as well. Their to token is native on Ethereum, but I think they're trying to expand more into that BSC market. And uh, Alchemex, I've I've known. Uh, that one of their co-founders, not personally, but uh, uh, he was one of the uh, he was one of the uh, another project that I was part of. That uh, he you know wrote a lot of great constructive criticism and, and strategy review for that specific project. And uh, you know when I read it at the time, I'm like, oh man, if, if this guy ever creates a project, I'm like, just gonna throw all of my money at him. <laughs> it's, uh, unfortunately, I didn't do that, but uh, he's, he's a brilliant dude. That whole team at Alchemex is br brilliant for a bunch of minds. Um, so let's take a look at Wasabi and see what's going on. So they got just, just shy of 29 mil TVL, total value locked. So they have 29 million assets in their protocol. And then very last thing is, let's go to CoinGecko. And let's type in Wasabi. Let's look at like, what you want to look for here is their price is just a little bit depressed. Um, let's look at the price action total. And it's been on a you know, 665, 642. So it hasn't really been doing a whole heck of a lot. It's been kind of ranging nonstop. Uh, you know, there's a lot more advanced charting tools, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna use the one available on uh, Coin CoinGecko. So yeah, you know, it looks like the price action's been pretty, pretty substandard, pretty, just ranging, nonstop ranging. Like the rest of the market, we're just stuck in this eternal range of BTC being 30,000 to 35,000 and Ethereum 20, 2,000 to 2,400. So that's our life now, guys. That's that's what we're stuck in. That's what we, we're gonna die here. So anyways, on the happier things. <laughs> so, so here we go. Um, what I wanted to show you guys is, look at the market cap. It's only, you know, just a shy of four million. Uh, they're fully diluted valuation, so that's essentially the the uh, amount of tokens that they emit as rewards for people staking in their platform uh, to incentivize them to keep their assets there. Uh, they've emitted all of those, it looks like, but that might be that might be an error. Is I think they still have some pools open, so we'll check that out here in a second. Um, Total value lots. I mean, just shy of twenty nine million. So that's a pretty good pretty good thing that you want to see um that's you know solid numbers you basically want this number to be under one um you know the lower it is the the better um kind of opportunity i feel like it is is uh, if you know there's a super highly inflated project worth multi-billion dollars and they only have 10 million assets under management because it's really not that notable of a thing but it's more just built on hype and uh, marketing then typically this this ratio will be over one. Uh, not all the times. So there's there's special considerations for sure, but um, in this instance, that's pretty much the case. Um, but yeah, I think that's that'll probably that's a good that's a good stopping point. That uh, kind of gives you a baseline understanding. We covered, you know, DeFi Llama, Merv Tech, uh, GitHub, how to research projects, how to understand these numbers, how to evaluate them, and. Uh, you just kind of have to dissimilate all this information, uh, digest it, and um, and apply it to your own risk management and risk tolerance. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it, guys. I appreciate you tuning in, and hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. Peace.